Good morning. Good morning. morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And also it's Lent, so settle down. (laughs) Before we start this morning, we're going to be doing the scrutiny today for um, the RCIA. It's our last week of scrutinies. There's a sung response that goes along with that. And really quick, if it's okay, we're just going to run through that response a couple of times just so you know what's happening there. I also want to announce the intentions for today's Mass. This morning's intentions are Mary Muner and Diana Jones. Because we're singing the scrutinies, those won't be announced during the petitions because the petitions are different. Um, Mia's going to throw this slide up here for us, and we're going to run through this just for a second. Okay. So Marlene will actually be at the AMBO during the time that we're doing this. And you're going to hear the band playing just a little bit underneath. And the response is, give, oh, no, it's not. Sorry, that's why I was off. I didn't untranspose. I even wrote that. So our response is, give us new life. Try that with me. Give us new life. And Marlene will read um, some of the scrutinies, like one overwhelmed with struggles, and we'll sing, Give us new life. When we find it hard to pray, Give us new life. When God's way seems hard, Give us new life. That's all there is to it. I just didn't want you to be lost when we got there. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, and good morning, holy people. Welcome to St. John Paul II on the fifth Sunday of Lent and St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you Irish people out there and all of you who wish to be Irish today. Saddened to announce the death of Mary Lou Bauman. Uh, Mary Lou, I think we announced this last week, has died. Her funeral liturgy will be celebrated Monday, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And then Jim Schaefer, is Mary Jo here? There she is. Mary Jo, our, our condolences to you and to all your family on the death of Jim. Uh, a, a sudden and very uh, shocking death. So uh, that funeral liturgy will be celebrated uh, at 10 a.m. on Friday. So condolences to you and to your family. want to welcome anybody who's visiting here, uh, our first time at JP2. We'll start over here in this section. Do we have any guests here in this section? Where are you visiting from? Oh, St. Mary, oh. St. Mary the Nods, welcome. Where are you visiting from? Illinois. Illinois. Okay, good to have you with us. Any others over here? What about in this section? Any guests over here in this section? And what about over here? Where are you from? Idaho. Idaho. Okay, good to, good to have Idaho with us today. Good to have you with us. Any others over here in our last two sections? Let's welcome our guests with us today. We are doing the third scrutiny, as uh, Katie mentioned, so we'll be using the A readings, the optional A readings for the scrutiny today. So we invite you, if you're following along in your missile, to look for those optional A readings. A boiler update, uh, we have collected 292,000 and a little bit over that right now. That's not counting anything that came in this weekend. Uh, so our goal is 320, but with that money already collected, we have already begun uh, the project, and they've already started to work on that. So thank you to all who have contributed to that, and it's not too late to add your gift to that. Additional gifts will be used to cover any unforeseen uh, expenses with the project, and any money that's not used on the project will be put into our endowment fund to care for all of our buildings on our two campuses. Friday will be the last of our Stations of the Cross. That'll be at 7 p.m. this Friday. And our last Men's Club Fish Fry this Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. And thank you to all the Men's Club and all the ladies who help out with that as well. Uh, Not only for the fish fries, but for all that they do for our parishes. I am happy to announce that Father Nico Tizak has been appointed as the pastor of St. Mary's in New Albany, uh, effective this coming Wednesday. That's good news for us because it means we get Father Ronald back 
Uh, so Father Ronald will be back with us uh, starting next weekend uh, for Palm Sunday. Of course, just as it happened at St. Mary's, uh, the Archbishop has said that he'll be with us for another year. Uh, and, but just as happened at St. Mary's, if the Archbishop ever needs him for something, uh, he's always free to move him. But right now the plan is for him to be with us for another year. Holy Week begins next week. Uh, Palm Sunday is next Sunday. We invite you to wear your uh, best red outfit uh, to celebrate Palm Sunday. Uh, and we'll have our regular mass schedule next weekend. Holy Thursday is the following Thursday, March 28th. And our Holy Thursday Mass of the Lord's Supper is at 7.30 p.m. Good Friday services are at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. That's the 29th. And then the Easter Vigil, the Saturday evening anticipation Mass for Easter, March 30th will be at 9 p.m. Uh, and Easter Sunday we'll have our regularly two scheduled Masses, but they'll be pretty crowded. So I uh, just invite you to come and join us for Holy Week. RCIA pictures of those who are coming into the church are out on the rotating bulletin board back there. Uh, we invite you to write them a note, uh, welcome them to our parish sometime before Easter. We'll give them to them uh, sometime right after Easter, so we invite you to take part in that. The Archdiocese is hosting several listening sessions in preparation for the upcoming Synod. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to share with Archdiocese staff your comments and concerns uh, for the church. We are hosting one of these listening sessions here at JP2. That'll be next Saturday, March 23rd at 9.30 a.m. in the gym meeting room. At this time, Archbishop Thompson plans to be here. However, I do know there's a funeral for one of our priests, uh, the father of one of our priests, that same day, so I don't know if, uh, which one he'll be at. But somebody will be here and facilitate an opportunity for you to share uh, ideas and concerns about the church. And there's more information on that in the bulletin board. Divine Mercy Sunday follows Easter Sunday. Our Divine Mercy team has been hard at work planning events to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. So I'm going to invite up Barbara N uh, Rand Nicole to share a few words from the Divine Mercy team. So there she is. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Barbara Nicol, and I'm a member of St. John Paul II Divine Mercy Commission. Our beautiful church is named after the great Pope, St. John Paul II. And within the sanctuary, we have a statue of him. Back in this section, and positioned close to the statue is an alcove that holds the relic of St. John Paul II, as well as the divine mercy image of Jesus, which states, Jesus, I trust in you. The statue, relic, and image are positioned close together because the message of divine mercy was very important to St. John Paul II. He had a strong devotion to the message of mercy that was given to a fellow Polish citizen, Sister Faustina Kowalska, in the 1930s. Then in the year 2000, at her canonization, Pope John Paul II proclaimed the Sunday after Easter as Divine Mercy Sunday. This is also called the octave of Easter or the eighth day of Easter. The reason Pope John Paul II did this was because of St. Faustina's diary where she recorded Jesus saying to her, I, Jesus, desire that the first Sunday after Easter be the feast of mercy. The soul that would go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. That's the important part. Let me repeat. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion on that day shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Pope John Paul II gave us this important feast day, so we here at St. John Paul II Catholic Church plan to celebrate this great day of mercy. As you leave today, commission members will be handing out flyers and information regarding how our parish will be celebrating the Feast of Divine Mercy in three weeks, the weekend after Easter, April 6th and 7th, with extra confession hours and a holy hour. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. We will have prayer ministry after Mass. If you have any prayer intentions, you can go back and see our prayer minister. She'll, he or she will be at the Divine Mercy alcove. Uh, and you can go back and pray with them, and they'll pray with you. And at this time, we invite you to find a prayer partner by introducing yourself to one other person or saying hello to one other person then praying for that person throughout this Mass.
Thank you for doing that. And now we just invite you to take a moment and quiet yourself as we prepare to celebrate our liturgy today. Give me justice, O oh God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless from the deceitful and cunning. Rescue me, for you, O oh God, are my strength. I invite those of you who are able to kneel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. As we gather together, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. sent to heal the contrite of heart Kyrie. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And I invite our young people forward for our children's liturgy of the word, open to kindergarten through grade five. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O oh, my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you that you might live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus, you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john now a man was ill lazarus from bethany the village of mary and her sister martha mary was the one who had anointed the lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair it was her brother lazarus who was ill so the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, this illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he meant ordinary sleep. So Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. And Martha said to him, 
I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, the teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to meet him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how much he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who had opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But I, because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And so Jesus said to, him, to them, untie him and let him go free. Now, many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like you to take a moment and say a prayer for your prayer partner at this Mass. Thank you for doing that. In the last two weeks, as we've chosen the A readings to correspond with our scrutinies, I preached about encounters with God. Two weeks ago, I shared the story of three encounters with God that came in very different ways and from very different places. I told the story of a woman who was a friend of mine who encountered God at a women's shelter back home. The Israelites had encountered God at a rock on Mount Horeb, and the woman in the gospel story that weekend encountered Jesus at the well. And that first weekend, I asked the question, where do you go to meet God for life-giving waters? Last week, I shared about a man born blind and his encounter with God and the journey of faith that helped him to move from blindness to sight, from sight to insight, and then from insight to faith. And I made the point that that's God's desire for all of us, that we make that similar pilgrimage of faith, that we ourselves move from not being able to see to seeing, from blindness to sight, from not understanding to understanding, from sight to insight, and from unbelieving to believing, from insight into faith. And today we look at another encounter with God, in the story of the raising of Lazarus. And what I find interesting and a little bit different about this particular encounter with God is this. In the first story, the woman at the well 
who has a very personal encounter with Jesus. The woman at the well was the only one there at the well at that time. It was just her and Jesus alone. In the story of the man born blind, the encounter he has with Jesus was with the blind man and Jesus alone. Now very soon his family became involved and the Pharisees became involved, but, not o- but only in the sense of giving witness and giving testimony to what had happened. Today's encounter with God, as I see it, is a little bit different. It begins with the faith of Martha and Mary, and in particular, Martha. Poor Martha always gets a bad rap from the story of Martha and Mary inviting Jesus into their home. Martha does all the work. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus. Martha begins to complain, and then Jesus says to her, Martha, Martha, Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken from her. Well, in today's gospel, if she needed redemption, Martha redeems herself. Jesus has not yet even come into town, and Martha runs out to meet him, and she confronts him. And now I think there's just a little bit of anger in her words at at first. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then I think she catches herself, and her real faith is shown when she says, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. This is real faith. Jesus, I know Lazarus would not have died if you had been here, but even now I know you can change this. Even now I know that with you, everything's going to be okay. That's faith. And Jesus says to her, your brother will rise. And Martha responds, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. And these next lines are so, so very important. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And then he asks a very important question to to Martha. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? When you experience a death, do you really believe that your loved one will live again? The loved one that you miss so terribly right now, do you believe that they are alive with God? that death is not the last word. Jesus says, for everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Having that kind of faith is the first challenge of a genuine encounter with God. But there's another challenge in today's gospel. Remember, the first two encounters we did the last two weekends were personal encounters, the woman at the well and the man born blind. But this one involves a whole lot of other people because not only are there many people watching as this encounter takes place but they are immediately given a role in helping Lazarus after his being raised from the dead you see after Jesus says roll away the stone take away all that separates the living from the dead after Jesus yells Lazarus come out and after Lazarus takes those first steps out of the tomb then Jesus says this untie him and let him go free. Untie him and let him go free. You know, I think about that. Untie him and let him go free. I kind of thought originally, wasn't Lazarus already free by Jesus calling him out of the tomb? Hadn't Jesus already broken the bonds of death and the chains of death so that Lazarus could be free? But as I read it again, I found that line to be an interesting twist in the story a twist that I think is important for us to recognize, and a twist that was not apparent in these other two encounters with God. Lazarus may have been raised from the dead, but there was no life until he was untied, until he was unbound. In other words, the people in his life must help him to live or he will continue to be dead. St. John uses a lot of symbolism in his gospel. And I think symbolically, I think John wants us to hear our own story in this story that he tells. Some of us, I suspect, are like Martha and Mary, who know the right words of faith, but who don't always know how to put them into action. I suspect that some of us are like Lazarus. We've been raised with our own encounter with God, and now we must learn to live in that encounter. Too many of us, however, I think walk around stiff legs, waiting to be unbound. Too many of us have received the gift of new life, 
but have not been set free to experience it. We need each other. We need church to unite us and let us go free. Some of us are tied up by our habits and our beliefs. Some of us are tied up by fear and apprehension. Some of us are tied up by guilt and blame. And some of us are bound by grief and heartache. You know, in my 30 plus years as a priest, I've heard countless stories of people who were so tied up in the burial clause of hurt and pain and disappointment that they couldn't see a way out. But even more often, even more often, I've heard stories of people who have been unbound. I've met people who have come out of really bad addictions and have found a church, the place that they can become unbound. I've encountered people who have come from troubled or broken homes and found a loving environment here that is both freeing and life-giving. At Easter this year, we'll baptize 13 new Catholics. Many of them are here today. Baptism is a sacramental equivalent of being called forth from the tomb, a place where we hear Christ call our name and know that we have received new life. In baptism, God gives us new life. In baptism, we are restored from life or to life from death. But baptism itself does not unbound us. The unbinding must happen in and through the church where we grow in our faith. The unbinding occurs each time we gather here to worship. The unbinding happens in every classroom of our school and faith life program. The unbinding takes place each time we empower someone to serve, as Christ, to serve Christ. And the unbinding takes place in every Bible study, Alpha series, Hour of Adoration, or discipleship group. And all of these, all of these can be encounters with God. My prayer for all of us is that as we approach the holiest week of our church year, that we might be released from all that still binds us, and we may be set free every time we encounter God, especially, especially in this Holy Eucharist. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. My friends, this morning we are blessed at St. John Paul II to be welcoming several new members into our faith community on Holy Saturday night. Today, we have most of them with us for the third and final rite of scrutiny. These scrutinies are part of the ancient initiation rites of our church. They are meant to uncover and heal any weakness and sin in them. They are also meant to strengthen all that is in them that is upright, strong, and good. 
And so I invite the elect forward with your sponsor as your name is called. Anderson Boer, Caden Bradley, Josiah Cornelius, Jalen Tolley, Jackson Kremer, Madison Owens, Brian Sheckle, Cora Vickers, Cooper Zahn, Jameson Harris, Art Cash, Andrew Foley, Dina Rogers, Aiden Saylor, Travis Sparkman, Thomas Harris. Members of this faith assembly, I invite you now to pray in silence, asking that these elect be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and the true freedom that results from being a child of God. Elect of God, I invite those who are able to kneel. And I invite your sponsors as representatives of our parish assembly to symbolize your support by doing two things today. First, place your hand on your candidate's shoulders, and then after I lay hands on your candidate for you to do the same. And to all the rest of you, God's holy church, I invite you to pray for these elect that God has called, that they may remain faithful to him and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. So let us pray for these elect whom God has chosen. May the grace of the sacraments conform them to Christ in his passion and resurrection and enable them to triumph over the bitter fate of death. Overwhelmed with struggles. When we feel beat down. When God seems distant. When we feel alone. When we give in to our fears. As we struggle to know ourselves, Give us new life. when we find it hard to pray, Give us new life. when hope seems lost, Give us new life. when gossip seems easy, Give us new life. when we want to judge others, Give us new life. As we grieve a loved one, give us new life. When we don't understand our actions, give us new life. When we stifle the Holy Spirit, give us new life. When mercy is missing, give us new life. When sin draws us near, give us new life. When we follow the crowd, give us new life. When God's way seems hard, give us new life. When my way seems right, Give us new life. When we feel judged by others, give us new life. When our faith is tested, give us new life.
invite the elect to remain kneeling. I invite all of you to stand. I invite you to extend your hand in prayer toward these elect as we ask God's blessing upon them. Father, God of the living, you sent your Son to proclaim life, to snatch us from the realm of death, and to lead us to the resurrection. Free these elect from the death-dealing power of the spirit of evil, so that they may bear witness to their new life in the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, by freeing us from sin, you have shown us that you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Free from the grasp of death those who await your life-giving sacraments and deliver them from the spirit of corruption. Through your spirit who gives life, fill them with faith, hope, and charity that they may live always with you in the glory of your resurrection. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite all of you to stand. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply on the word of God, which you have shared with us today. We look forward to sharing with you fully at the Lord's table, but for now we send you forth in God's peace. Amen. prepare the altar for the celebration of the Eucharist. Welcome to bring forward your personal offerings and those for our food pantry. Please join us in singing Earthen Vessels. In earth and vessels well unto 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as eternal God, he raised him from the tomb. Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to newness of life. Through him, the host of angels adore you and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Charles, our Bishop, with all the bishops, all the clergy, and all your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John Paul II, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins then, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. And let's share with one another now a sign of Christ's peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ preserve us all unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. If you see Garrett Colburn today, wish him a happy 18th birthday. And I do thank you all for your participation in this liturgy as I ask God's blessing upon you. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads now as we pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and be with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us join in singing the summons. Oh